place we live. It, it's a great privilege to be part of this Ipswich video around the NDIS, both from a personal perspective and from a community perspective. Those that know me well, my name is Peter Tully, and with the support of my wife Linda, we've actually, since 2007, been involved in disability community awareness. At the moment, I, I'm engaging because I put things around my life to be able to support me to engage. However, there's people like my son in the community and other people in the community who don't have that support for social engaging and networking in the community. So why do I see the NDIS as being important, number one, for participants with disabilities? It's because it's about in, engaging their life in the community, but opening up a topic where service providers and advocacy and the general community, believe it or not, have a role to say, if you could engage your life, in particular in this input community which we're talking about today, what would you like to do? Because at the moment people start building their goals and dreams into their lives, they become part of the community. And then by becoming part of the community, they then engage back into the community. So because of that, that's why I believe that everyone has a role to play, including the local coffee, the local coffee shop and the community sports centre, the bus stop, local engagement group. We all have a role to play in engaging people with disability. Welcome to Ipswich. Ipswich is the place where I was born and raised. In fact, my family's been in Ipswich for over 137 years. I'm Aaron Evans, and I'm the manager of a local NGO. I'm here to highlight the fact that in just over 12 months time, the NDIS will roll out in Greater Ipswich. Our population here is about 190,000 people. We're gonna see about, about 4,000 people funded under the scheme. Let's just put this into perspective. The National Disability Insurance Scheme was going to cost Queenslanders about $4.8 billion. That money goes to support 1.8% of the Queensland population of who will be funded under an NDIS. These people are going to be funded for everyday supports, but also with the expectation of social and economic participation in the community. But what does this all mean? What does it mean to our local community? What does it mean to the future participants of the NDIS? How about we go and ask some local Ipswichians and see what they've got to say? Um, so what would you like to see people with a disability doing in the Ipswich community? Uh, I guess uh, what I'd like to see is really whatever they want to do. Like sometimes I feel they're held back because maybe of their disability or some like, implications that they have. But I guess with the funding, like I'd really like to see them maybe study more. Um, just be more involved in the community I think would be a great idea. And just more programs for them. Even to mingle with like people without disability I think would be a really good really good for the community. Really the exact same as anybody else because it'll empower them to believe that they are just like everybody else which is true. To see them uh, visit clubs that have a facility for entertaining them. Um, some clubs do, but a lot of clubs don't. But uh, if they, it'd be a nice outing for them to go to a club or a venue where there was uh, entertainment for them. I think they have the exact same right as us. Awesome, and if you work someplace, you'd be happy to work with the guys? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Awesome. To see changes going on here. I don't like to see um, Kira's uh, doing it for the pocket, for the money. Yep. I like to see they are doing the work, yep. not just pushing the um, disabled to the side because yep. of the, I don't know, for the shameless of them. Yep. Just hope that um, if they're going to do the course or the job, make sure that they do it right, not leaving them out there to hang or trying to do it, do it, them, do it themselves. Well, we're on this earth together and we should be doing it all together and whatever we can do to help these people do it together, let's do it together. Um, people with 
a disability in the Ipswich community should have the right to do anything as long as they're capable of doing it. Just all be the same and just treat them with respect. Just treat them. So we've heard the word on the street. Now we need to go and find out what the rest of the community is going to do to make the NDIS successful. And I'm talking about local businesses, I'm talking about local schools, I'm talking about NGOs who are now going to be profit for purpose. So let's go and have a chat to them. Let's get this going and see what we can do. At the end of Year 10, we have a set plan and path meeting for our Year 10 students where their parents and the student and the teachers all get together and we talk about what would the young person like to do for their future? What do they see themselves doing when they leave school? And we draw this up on the board, so we draw what their dreams are and then we talk to them about, well, what are your gifts? What are you good at? What are your skills, your abilities and your interests? And from knowing what their dreams are and those abilities, skills and interests, we work on a plan together of what courses they can do to achieve their dreams. And we work towards those and timeline them on a path poster, which is a visual poster, which the students learn to review themselves and they tick things off as they complete them. And they can see that they're working towards achieving their dreams. And um, then what I'd like to see is that businesses get involved in um, providing work experience opportunities, traineeships and volunteering and employment for our young people. And how can we in give those businesses an incentive to get involved and involve more businesses? provide is more of um, a not it's not what we provide it's what they can provide us as well and that's the way I see it um, it's almost a two-way street like these guys come to us and um, what they offer is a couple of hours each week and they do the smallest jobs from weeding and raking to labeling plants and everything like that makes a big difference it's so easy for me to provide the service because I'm not really doing anything. The guys come in with a carer, uh, the carer looks after them. I offer, you know, the task to be performed. Um, but I think every small business or every large business has the capacity to take on anyone, um, whether it be an hour or five hours, uh, because it's so easy. And what, the, what these guys provide is a service to us. I think that we need to take a multi-layered or multi-tiered response to this. Firstly, the government providing the funds and necessary support and incentives for businesses to become involved. Um, secondly, employers and business leaders uh, need to step up to the plate, really, and provide opportunity and jobs for disabled people. And thirdly, for community organisations like CATS to put together programs um, and support which is user friendly and with a minimum of red tape. For me this is all about inclusion, economic and social. People with disabilities have the same basic needs as any other person, a need to be part of something bigger, to be included, to be valued and respected and that's what we do and what the broader business community needs to step up to the plate to provide. It's definitely a two-way street and people with disability have a lot to offer. So what I'm getting at is that even the jobs that get taken for granted or take up a lot of a business owner's time uh, that may seem menial, even if it's just a tidy up of the workshop, can mean the world to a person with a disability. They just want and need to feel valued and part of something bigger. To be included in a workplace can just mean so much to someone. At the moment in Ipswich there's 2,200 people receiving support for disability. Um, it's envisaged that with the rollout of the NDIS we'll have an additional 1,600 people added to that. So when you talk about repercussions in the community, that's a pretty huge repercussion. That's almost doubling 
um, the number of people that will be accessing individual packages that give them uh, a life that is more equal uh, to other members of the community. There needs to be a better understanding. We have this sense that um, disability happens to other people. Um, you know, that you, start, you experience it your whole life and it's, people can become disabled in five seconds. You know, your whole life can change uh, overnight. And he was born with bacterial meningitis and I was the carrier. Could only be caught in the antenatal period and um, it was a very rare bacteria called a citrobacter. When we got to the hospital, the whole of his hair, head had swollen and the uh, fontanelles were up like this on the top of the head and the whole of the top of his head was rippling. His, he had lo quite long blonde hair and it was just rippling like that. It was really upsetting to see. No, we were told to never walk or talk. They don't know you like we know you, you not the one. I can't see that we're going to get the satisfaction that we all would like, but we have to be reasonable. I think that a lot of parents feel and I got something the other day that said, um, what's in it for carers? It's not about the carers, it's about the person. It's the person they're caring for. And uh, if Drew can continue to have the program similar to what he's doing now, that would be wonderful. Chicken and I'm a medical artist too. We'll be becoming a participant a bit in the IS3 world here in Cromwell Town. I'm excited that I will be able to first time to talk to it and so meaning my own funding. <laughs> um, well, I hope you give me the flexibility to um, arrange my support to learn my art and my art practice. So in, in um, organising my red timetable at the moment, I have to juggle around support times. Uh, I hope that under the NDIS it will be the opposite, that my support will work in with my artwork, my art practices, and mentoring other artists with disabilities. <laughs> What's fantastic is NDIC is opening the door to new opportunities and it's really about uh, facilitating uh, the community to have a more important role and part to play in the lives of people with disability but also the ability for people with disabilities to really connect with that community and to be supported in that connection. In essence it's really about integration, it's not about segregation as it has been, in, as it has been done in the past. There's so many things that people can do. First is live the life they want to live. Um, and in my sense, that's about three points. That's uh, meeting loved ones uh, and creating meaningful relationships. Um, that's about being financially um, sustainable and being, um, or having the opportunity to, if people want, have an employment paid or unpaid, it's very important. Um, and also the ability to have a place that they love and a place that they call home. Um, until now, those things were not uh, easily available for people with disability. NDIS will certainly provide the right support for people to live meaningful lives. Old life uncharted, land unexplored. When the buildings grow in the city sleep. 
So this is an exciting time to be a service provider in, in the disability sector because because this is the time when we've been given a system that means that we can affect real change. So we can keep doing what it is we've always done as a sector or we can embrace the philosophies and values that is the NDIS and we can make some real changes in our communities. And I'm excited because I feel like for perhaps the first time in my, my, my experience in working in this sector, the values of the system align beautifully with the values of the service that we provide and the values that I hold within myself and my life. So I feel completely aligned with the NDIS and I'm excited about it for, for everybody involved. So it's about change and it's, it's a good change. So it's up to us to make it happen. Well, I don't know why all the fuss is about NDIS. We should be saying, why is it taking so long? Why is it taking so long to make sure that no person gets left unnoticed in our community? The NDIS is just making sure that we all catch up on what needed to happen. I'm so proud to be part of a country. We're now starting to recognise what needs to be done so we can all enjoy, you know, the, the liberties that we have in this great country. It doesn't matter how we're born. It doesn't matter our nationality, our religion. We are all one and no one will be left unnoticed. Having conversation with the cow he met You jumped right in From the humble beginnings of the Everyday Counts campaign to now having a legislated national disability insurance scheme 2017, it comes to Ipswich Is Ipswich ready? Yes, Ipswich is ready Ipswich is a community that is seeking to be one that values every member and that's what we've seen throughout this documentary, a commitment from the cross-section of our community to having, I think, a community that's going to lead the field in an inclusion and be somewhere that a light has shone on to show how people with a disability can be supported under the National Disability Insurance Scheme. But with this great change, there comes great responsibility. There's great responsibility for the participants to now use the supports and the tax dollars that they're getting to step up and be valued and contributing members of our community. On the other side of the coin, service providers, we need to provide real opportunities for the people that we support in real community settings. The settings that are already there. We don't need to make them. We don't need to build any more communities. The community is here. Let's, 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 I want to challenge you and say, bring on the NDIS deep switch, because we're ready.